Hi there, my name's Nicole with so much more. And in today's video, we're going to be making the hugs and kisses quilt block. See, there's the hugs and kisses. It's a really fun pattern and you can find it on my website. Let's get started. For this quilt, I used a fat quarter collection by Zerka Designs for Paintbrush Studio Fabrics called Love Cats. And I also used my own curated collection of Painter's Palette Solids. This is a fat quarter friendly pattern and it came together quickly. Once I selected my fabric, I needed to cut these to size. You'll find your quilt block cutting measurements listed in the PDF pattern which is located in my online shop. Be sure to visit SoMuchMore.com to get your copy. I wanted to share the True Cut cutting system with you. I've been using this system for a while now and I really love the features that the system has to offer. You see the rotary cutter has a built-in groove on the side that runs along a track on the True Cut ruler. This really helps with accuracy and helps to avoid blade slippage. Now on the back of the ruler, I've placed some True Grip stickers and these are acrylic and hold the ruler in place while cutting. I used 11 different solids in this quilt and I also cut up some white fabric for the background. Even though this is a fat quarter friendly pattern, I went ahead and simply cut a quarter yard from each bolt since I have that in my online shop. Now that I have my fabrics cut, it's time to put them together. Now the basic construction for this block is quite simple. Simply snowball two diagonal corners on each large square. And I like to do this with the chain piecing method. Chain piecing can be monotonous, but it is highly efficient. Another trick that really sped up this step of the pattern is to utilize the lines on my grid glider instead of drawing diagonal lines on each white square. I'm just aligning the first side of the corner with the face plate needle hole and then using the line on my grid glider for the opposite side of the square. Once you get both diagonal corners snowballed, then you'll cut off the excess fabric at a quarter inch of the seam. Trimming off the excess fabric on the snowballed corners is super easy with my True Cut cutting system. I can simply align my stitching with the quarter inch mark on the True Cut ruler and let the rotary blade do the rest of the work for me. And I can be confident that my blade isn't going to veer off track when it's interlocked in the track guide system. Now that we've sewn and trimmed our snowballed corners, we need to press those corners out. And I like to use my steam iron by Olisso. This is a smart iron that raises and lowers on touch. It's super hot and gets the job done every time. And I really like the color too. Next, we're gonna sew these units together. Just make sure that when you're sewing these sets together, that you place them right sides together with light colors. And of course, we're practicing our efficient method of chain piecing and it gets the job done quickly. You'll notice that I'm using my quarter inch presser foot. This helps to ensure that I maintain an accurate seam allowance. And I'm also utilizing the line that's marked on my grid glider sewing surface. Using these tools together gives me more confidence and better accuracy with my sewing. Back to the ironing board, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my iron with some tap water. Surprisingly enough, this brand of iron doesn't require distilled water. In fact, the manufacturer says don't use it. So it's nice to just refill it from the sink. And I'm gonna be really intentional on how I press these blocks. When I sew these units together, I wanna to make sure that my seams will nest. So take special care in the direction that you press your seams. I'm just gonna use my fingers to check my nested seams and maneuver the fabric as it moves underneath the needle. Now you can certainly decide and choose to use sewing pins to keep your fabrics together as well. It's just a personal choice and how comfortable you feel without using pins. 
and you guessed it, I'm going to chain piece all of these together. We need to give our blocks a nice pressing before we piece them together. Unless you know the layout of your design is going to be tricky to know which way to press your seams. So just do your best, or if all else fails, you can even press them open. I've already decided what my layout will be on paper, but I wanted to put it on my design wall to see if I still like the idea. My design wall is actually a piece of construction styrofoam that's covered with a cotton flannel sheet. I stapled the sheet onto the styrofoam and then nailed the whole thing to the wall. And now I don't have to use pins to secure my quilt blocks to my design wall. There's a little bit of magic that keeps flannel and quilt blocks together. Once I have my layout to my liking, I take each row down one by one and label it accordingly. This will help me keep my blocks in order and sorted so that when I sew them together, I won't get them mixed up. Sewing these blocks into rows is kind of exciting because we're so close to being finished with this quilt. Once we get the rows sewn, we press the seams accordingly so that when we sew the rows together, all of the seams will nest. One of the things I like to do to keep my rows organized is to label them by number. That way, when it's time to sew the rows together, I don't get things out of order and accidentally sew the row in the wrong place. If you're new to quilting, I recommend using sewing pins to keep your rows together. It's important to join your rows while paying attention to the alignment of your block seams. Now I'm pausing every now and again to realign these rows as I'm sewing. It's also a good idea to readjust your growing quilt as you're sewing. You'll notice that the more rows you have together, the heavier your quilt becomes and can create drag. So the best way to prevent this is to try to keep most of your quilt top on top of the table as you're piecing. And there we have our finished quilt top. Now I just need to figure out my backing and how I want to quilt it. This was a really fun design to make and I love how the fabrics look together. If you'd like to make a quilt like this also, head over to my website and download your Hugs and Kisses quilt block pattern today. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or even TikTok to find out how I finished this quilt. See you next time.